Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Uh, um. <laughs> This morning, we are discussing the film Mosul, uh, which takes place in northern Iraq about the Nineveh militia or the Nineveh SWAT team. Uh, today, I have with me director and writer Matthew Michael uh, Carahan, Suhail uh, Debesh, and Adem Besa. Uh, how's everyone doing today? Very well. Good. 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 Very well. Uh, Suhail, I'm going to have to ask you this question in Arabic first, since you're from Iraq. And then, oh my God, thanks God, <laughs> finally, somebody <laughs> speak Arabic with me. <laughs> and then I'm going to translate it for Michael so he can answer it in English. And if you want to answer it in English, it's okay. Um, so we're going to go uh, hot and heavy and we're going to go real fast. So, أول شيء سهيل, الفيلم بتدخل بننوي. شو اسمه, الحزب ننوي السوات. وبلد مازل معمر فوق ننوي. بس الفيلم ولا مرة بتحكي عن الأشورية اللي أصل للإرعائية ليش ليش هيك صار بالفيلم؟ um, Michael, uh, the question was uh, the the film takes place in the Nineveh Plains. It is about the militia that is known as the Nineveh SWAT team. Um, Mosul is built on the ancient capital city of Nineveh, yet the indigenous Assyrian people who were the inhabitants and still the inhabitants of Nineveh are not mentioned in the film at all. Uh, why is that? Um, because I, I, you have to, I think you have to strike a balance with a movie like this where you're already, at least for an American audience, I'm already taking fairly huge risks uh, shooting it in Arabic with uh, a cast from that part of the world. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't feel like I could get that deep into the history of the place beyond the, you know, the opening scroll. And I mean, there, there was a version of the opening scroll where I talked about how you know, Mosul is a, is a 4,000 year old city um, built on biblical Nineveh. And it is a, you know, a birthplace of, of civilization. Um, I, it, it, it's, a, it's a difficult balance, but I, I felt like I had to focus on these characters and the lives they're living right now in order to kind of achieve the goal I set for myself to, to open the broader world's eyes to these men, these people fighting for their home and their families, because only people in that part of the world, I think, knew about them already. Um, so yeah, I, it's, it's, it's a, like I said two or three times now, it's a very difficult balance when you're dealing with a history that is as rich as not just Mosul's, but Iraq's. Um, but I tried to focus on the characters and I tried to, you know, do justice in the team to, you know, there are Shia, Sunni, Christians, Kawa, uh, he's, he's a, a, a different character because he's Kurdish. Um, so I, I tried to hit some of the, you know, the, the cultural aspects of the team as best I could in what time we had. I don't know if that, if that is an answer, but. No, it's an answer. It's just, you know, it was something that we wanted to ask. So, hey, yeah. please. Yeah, uh, uh, I agree with Matthew. But, uh, and uh, are you going to see it in the movie? I, I don't know if you, you see the movie. I right? saw the movie. It was gorgeous. You uh, saw the movie. The, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, there's some, uh, some uh, dialogue uh, Matthew has written for, for my character, Jason's character, and show you this guy's from this city, like the Jasim and the other, his team from the city, from Mosul. Right. And Mosul, you know, Mosul, uh, let, let's say Nainawa. Mm -hmm. Nainawa, uh, I don't know how you say. Nineveh in English. Nineveh or something like that in English, I don't know. 
but uh, in Mosul, uh, there's a, there's a Sunni, there's a Shia, there's a Kurd, and there's a Christian, and we don't want to say it. I'm Shia, I'm Sunni. We don't want to say it like that. We say it in in uh, in our dialogue. We say we are from this city. I I I I I born in this city. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we don't know who's who's Jasim. Maybe Jasim he's uh, he's a Christian or uh, Ashurian or mm -hmm. some. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we say it, that's what I'm, I I want to say it. We say it on the in our dialogue. Okay. Was... And there's I'm sorry. There's a I mean for uh, for me mm -hmm. and there's for a lot of Iraqi people. We don't make a difference between Christian, Sunni, Shia, Muslim, or Kurdish. You know, you. no, of course. I just have to ask that question because you know people want yeah. to know, and you know, asal Iraq with they might be in Suwon so heklish. You know, Adam, you're playing a, a Kurdish character in here, and I think your character had the most growth and development. Uh, one scene. This is the only spoiler I'm going to give is when Jasm and the Persian general are arguing uh for an exchange with the cigarettes being uh, the um the the currency uh i actually found that argument funny because i've heard that argument before you know going back and forth between iraqis and, and iranians so uh, i mean that that really hit uh, quite strong but but your character had the most development from somewhat naive and losing his uncle to you know, gaining vengeance on his uncle what was it like not only being from uh, from Tunisia, because your dialect is different than the Iraqi dialect, but having to perform in the Iraqi dialect with a character like this. You there, buddy? Adam? I think Adam's screen froze. Uh, let let me answer his, uh, your question. Well, it was a lot of work. Oh yeah, uh, he's saying the, the. You hear me? Now we can hear you. you. Hear me? Yeah. Yeah, your screen just froze. Oh, you can hear me? Yeah. Okay, because I didn't speak for. I was like. <laughs> he, no, no, <laughs> uh, it was a he lot. was running a little bit. <laughs> uh, it was a lot of work to answer your question uh, with Doctor Abbas and uh, and Sam Saleh for the for the for the dialect first. And, uh, and then um, the scenes where um, <clears throat> Kao, you know, uh, the, the thing that strikes me with him is adaptation. Mm -hmm. He, he got to adapt himself really, really fast. And I think that's something you can relate to in life. There's a few situations where uh, you don't have time to think and you just have to act. And this is a, a really... Um, image this character is really condensed on this so it was trying to find the um, the spots with matthew and the the right um the right moments to to show the balance and a lot of work and and dive in dive in dive in strong in the character to try to to be true right uh matthew for you since you don't speak arabic um and you know there are there are multiple dialects of arabic same way there are multiple dialects of english um to direct a film in all Arabic that uses a Baghdadi Iraqi accent, uh, because that's that's more easy for people to understand uh, for you know throughout the country. Um, how difficult was it to go and try to direct everybody in that language? Because I know Isha is from uh, is from Jordan, Jordan. is from uh, from Iraq proper, Adam mm -hmm. is from Tunisia, and so on and so forth. That you have to keep it in this uh, Iraqi dialect while everyone speaks their own and sometimes, you know, words from those countries are going to, to blend in. Yeah, um, it, it was, I thought going in, it was gonna be a much bigger challenge than it actually turned into. Um, and on a larger note, I, I, you know, the advantages of shooting a movie like this in as close to the mother tongue of the SWAT team as we could get with people from that part of the world, the advantages of that so completely outweighed any, any disadvantages or, or any notion that it was gonna make my job harder because people were just 
enthusiastic is an understatement. They were just ready to kind of run through walls for you because, you know, as, as Thayer, a member of the cast would say, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm still just uh, overjoyed. I'm, I'm not ISIS driver number four. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I'm actually a good guy. So um, that's just a larger note. You're hitting on it with your question. It wasn't, it wasn't hard because I had, you know, these people around me who so desperately wanted this to work. Um, Suhail, uh, Zainab al-Hariri, the script supervisor, was born and raised in Iraq. Her father was a physician and was executed because he was part of a plot to kill Saddam. And she got out when she was six or seven years old. Never saw him again, obviously. Um, uh, uh, Sam Saleh, who was uh, one of our advisors, who was born and raised in Iraq and was there for the language and the military piece because he was a translator as a teenager for American forces. They so fell in love with him, they brought him back to the United States. He becomes a naturalized citizen, joins the army and goes back to Iraq as a US soldier. Um, you know, I had at any given time, you know, seven, eight people around me who could tell me not only if they got the line right, but if the dialect was right. And, you know, there were these moments where we would have a scene that was just beautiful and worked beautifully. But like you said, you could hear the Jordanian and, uh, or you could hear the kind of the, the, the Moroccan and we would have to do it over again. So um, that, that part was the hardest, was to, to see these takes that were just spectacular that you couldn't use because you had to stick to your rule. It has to sound as close to the mother tongue of that SWAT team as we could get. Right. Um, I, before I let you go, I have one more question, but I'm going to make a comment real quick. Um, Iraqi women are some of the toughest women on the face of the planet. Uh, for example, you know, the, this young girl that left at six years old, my friend's mother, when they were leaving Iraq uh, through Syria as refugees, was taking pictures of the refugees leaving Iraq into Syria. And you see the horror in his father's face of really, this is when you're gonna start documenting everything. And it was just like family photos. Um, you know, and I know translators yes. from, from Iraq that you know, were Assyrian and Chaldean that went back and, and translated for the US military. But uh, before I let you go, Mazel releases on Netflix on Thursday, November 26th on Thanksgiving day. Uh, what should we be most thankful for, um, especially since Veterans Day just passed in watching this film and now being American citizens, like I know Suhail lives here in the United States. I think, Adam, are, are you in France or are you in, uh, in the US now or? In France. Yeah, so what should we be most thankful for while, uh, while realizing the significance of Mazel? You want me to go first, guys? You go first. Go first. Um, uh, that's a great question. I think we should be thankful that, uh, and I may have already said it, so forgive me if I'm repeating it, um, that we have so much more in common than, than divides us. And those things that we do have in common are more numerous and more fundamental to humanity and, and decency uh, than the opposite. Um, and it was one of the first things that I fell in love with reading Luke's article that, my God, these, these men are fighting for the very same things that I would love to think I would fight for if I ever found myself in a similar position. And so I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for that and for the opportunity in my own small way to try and show that to the wider world. Uh, that that didn't that don't know these people exist that these men exist and they fought like lions for their home and their families. So, hey, you're here in the United States now. Would you would you like to interject real quick? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, in the U.S. right now, and uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it. it and for the Thanksgiving Day uh, movie is gonna come out on this day. It, it it's mean a lot for me, uh, and 
I think uh, people they gonna like the movie because uh, some sometime people they think we need to see something different. We need to see something really true. Like this story is a really a really a true story and really touch your heart because maybe it's gonna happen for anybody. For any country, it's gonna happen. And like Matthew, he said when when he he read the the the, the article, it's really like I like I, I put my myself in the, in this in, in this position. I'm gonna fight for it. This is my city. This is my country. This is my family. This is my 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 uh, my kids. And uh, I hope people they're gonna like it. Adam, France helped the United States get their independence from the English, so we'll leave you with the last word since you're over there in France. Well, I'm, uh, uh, well uh, as the guy said, um, uh, I'll be quite, um, I agree with them. Um, I hope, I mean, people, people dig the movie to see for the first time, you know, what a great job they did and, and the trust they had and Matthew, the way he fought and the Russo brothers, how they trusted this just to show to the world for the first time, you know, that to hear, to see Arabs not be the terrorists and to see that it's Arab against Arabs and that ISIS is an enemy for us Arab even more than for the Western world. Because first of all, they, 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 they dirty the image of the Arab world and they do bad in, in our country first before they attack Europe or they attack the US. So to have the opportunity to show that, that I think the people that are more involved in, 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 in a fight against terrorism are, are Arabs themselves and to do the split and, and to be able to show this and to be the voice of, of these people was a great honor for me and for the rest of the cast, I know for them too. So yeah, I just hope this story touches people's heart and, uh, and the open minds. And as you said, Matthew, try maybe to connect in the future and see the, the things we have in common more than the differences. Beautiful. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Matthew, Michael Carahan, uh, Suhail Debesh, and uh, Adam Besa. Mazel comes out on Netflix Thanksgiving Day, November 26, 2020. Uh, they fought the good fight against Daesh, and thank you for telling the story of the people within the city of Mosul. I greatly appreciate everything you've done. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Take care.